Today, I'm going to speak with Mark Chalmers, the CEO of Energy Fuels, and I'm going to preface my questions with some remarks by myself. Mark, uh, I don't think the public understands that there are only two rare earth producers in North America, and that is uh, MP and Energy Fuels. And MP has a mine. Energy Fuels at this point is building a mine, as I understand it, in Brazil, but is buying material on the market. Also, the other guy is, is processing bastinocyte ore from their world-class deposit in California, and you are bringing to the United States for the first time the commercial production of separated wares from monazite, which in this world is the uh, mineral of choice for producing mag magnet rare earths. So what I'd like to ask you is, what's your time frame? Uh, because I know that you you have generated, I'm in Detroit, you've generated a lot of interest in the automotive industry because you're, you're looking like you're definitely, go, you're definitely going to be a supplier. And again, there are only two possibilities in the United States, and you're one of them. What do you see as the time frame for your being able to deliver something to the supply chain for rare earth permanent magnets? Um, yeah, Jack, that's a bit of a loaded question, but yes. yeah, we are making um, rap rapid progress. And as you know, you know, we were able to uh, go into small commercial production of carbonate um, quite quickly with our relationship with Camores uh, in Florida and Georgia, and then selling that um, to Neo in Estonia. So, um, now we're advancing that strategy to include uh, separation uh, of that carbonate uh, at the White Mesa Mill into um, NDPR oxides and a Sumerian Plus carbonate, uh, which contains uh, the SEG and the heavies. Um, and we plan to have that uh, operable uh, in probably the later uh, Q1 of, of 24. So we will be in small commercial production, uh, we believe, with the sources of monazite securing from Kimors, and we're actively looking to build that stream up um, uh, over the coming uh, year or two uh, with the addition of Mejia uh, and other projects that we are currently uh, looking at uh, around the world. So, I mean, I think that from a small commercial perspective, it'll be 2024 uh, without question, uh, we hope to build that up in 25, 26, 27 at large scale. I mean, large scale being uh, in the order of a thousand tons of uh, NDPR uh, and then looking at trying to expand that uh, to somewhere north of, say, 3000 tons of NDPR uh, in due course and securing additional feeds. So, so we are thinking large, not small. You know, I'm, I'm going to say that the U.S. market for rare earth permanent magnets today without electric cars is about 12,000 tons a year, which would require 4,000 tons of NDPR. If we were to convert the American production to entire EVs, we'd need 40,000 tons of magnets, which would be about 13,000 tons of NDPR. And my, from my opinion, my point of view is that no matter how much you produce, you'll be able to sell all of it. What's, what's your long-term plan as far as entering the rare earth permanent magnet supply chain? How far down do you plan to go? Well, um, Jack, we, you know, we see that you have to integrate as many steps mm -hmm. as possible um, to get the economics. And so, uh, you know, we started with making the carbonate and then we moved uh, to the mining side with the acquisition of Bahia. Uh, and then we also decided that we had to also move to separation. Um, we're also looking at um, metals and alloys as the next step after separated uh, lights uh, and also looking at separated oxides for the heavies uh, in due course. So, I mean, I think that in order to have an economic outcome uh, in the rare earth space, uh, you need to be uh, as integrated as possible. You have to have access to, um, uh, you know, low cost of feet. And you also have, have to have each of those steps have got to make as much 
um, economic contribution as they can in each step. So I think one of the, 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 the problems that the Western U.S. has seen is that a lot of people are talking about just participating in a single step and getting their margin. And, and that really doesn't work when you look at the China plan. The China plan is, is you secure uh, the molecules and you take them all the way through uh, to a, a permanent magnet and electric motor uh, to get the economics to be um, compatible. Um, you, you, you can't do each step individually and, and, and get an economic outcome, in my opinion. I, I agree with you 100 percent. And I'm going to repeat that I only see two companies on this path in North America, and that no matter what they accomplish, you or the other guy, you could never possibly supply the demand in the United States. So I think you're in the enviable position of, of being in a uh, demand-driven industry. And you, like, you're like you talking three and four-year um, horizons. And that's because you're a professional mining engineer and developer. But when you when we talk to the end users, they say, "Well, we want this tomorrow," and then and then you explain to them that it takes a little a while to develop the the all of these technologies and commercially, they 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 just don't know what what to say. But I'm I'm I just want to make one more point. Uh, I don't know of anyone else in the in the Americas that has your particular background. And, and your degree of success in, in your chosen field. So if I had to bet who's going to be America's premier supplier of, of rare earths for magnets, I'd have to bet on energy fuels. That, that's, that's my position. Do you, do you disagree? Geez, Jack, you're flattering me here. So no. um, look, I, I, think, I think the difference is... Um, Energy Fuels is a company of doers, okay? Right. And um, and you have to have an element of being a part of, part promoter to be with these public companies. But but we're we're a company that goes out and does things, and um and we pride ourselves on that. You know, we're not trying to be the biggest promotion. Uh, we're trying to be the biggest doers in in whatever we do, and and that goes back to my time in the uranium industry globally. Uh, and also follows on with this this rare earth uh, strategy that we've been advancing for the last three and a half years is to do things, not just talk about things. So um, everything we do uh, is focused in that regard. So, um, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, who's which horse should you bet on? Um, you know, I usually bet on a few horses because there's only, you know, you know, you, you know, a horse can fall down and break its leg. But that's not our intent. Our intent is to continue to show the market that we're taking logical steps with the right focus, the right expertise um, uh, in the right locations um, globally. And, 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 and at the end of the day, if our um, uh, horse wins the Kentucky Derby, uh, I'll take it. But we're, we're going for a big success. Uh, we're trying to be world material. Uh, is it easy? No. But. Uh, you, somebody's got to try to do it, and we're trying to do it with our focus on monazite sands. I want I want to congratulate you on picking monazite as a feedstock, because monazite is the world's original rare earth ore. The only reason we went to bastosite in the United States is that we had a lot of it, and we didn't have as much monazite. But the world likes monazite because there's more of the magnet rare earths in the monazite than there are there is in the bastosite. But, of course, there was a problem. Monazite is naturally radioactive, and no one, no one would touch it in the United States until you came along with the only licensed facility in the United States, I believe, that can handle monazite because you can extract the uranium and extract and store the thorium, and no one else in North America can do that. Is that right? Well, nobody that's operating right now um, right. and nobody that's that's ready to do so. So, I mean, yeah, the, 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 the key to our story is that monazite contains the same amount of uranium as we typically mine on the Colorado Plateau in the vicinity of the White Mesa Mills. So, um, you know, we have the uh, capability, the knowledge um, and the facilities to handle 
and recover the uranium uh, and also recover um, the rare earths um, you know, using solvent extraction, which we're very comfortable with because it's a solvent extraction uh, facility. So, um, you know, our, our, our secret sauce is the being able to deal with the radioactivity and extract the uranium. That, that is what we have that others don't. When other people start to bring a feed to me, I say, how much radioactivity does it have? And they say, oh, it, it has none. And I say, oh, that's too bad because I want more radioactivity to recover the uranium. So, um, so yeah, our business strategy is completely different than really anybody else's that I know, except the Chinese. The Chinese recover the uranium and they recover the thorium. So, um, you know, we're replicating the China plan in the United States of America at Western standards, uh, the highest standards out there. Um, and, and, and so that's why our story is a bit different. One last question. Do you think your costs will be competitive with those of China? Again, a difficult question to answer because what are the costs? in china i don't know if anybody's ever told me what the china costs really are um but having said that um we believe that we will be world competitive if we have the integration in place does that mean that we're um uh, not going to be subject to any type of manipulation of the market no because the world is subject to manipulation but i believe when you look at the value of a ton of monocyte and you look at what i know are our processing costs um, if you look at all those integration steps, you've got to build together um, uh, of a model that, that works uh, and is as low cost as possible. Um, and so I think that when you look at those that are actually processing monocyte sands uh, outside of China, I think we've got a very, very attractive economic model that we're building upon. Thank you, Mark. Uh, that was all very enlightening. And I, I hope our viewers are paying close attention to what you're saying. Thank you again. Thank you, Jack.